We left off talking about the um, the the important steps of conducting a correct analysis. So let's review. The first one, they're not in order of importance, but just all of them that are together. They're not, what I want to explain here is, they're, it's not like one is more important than the other, but they will all work together to confirm. So the picture here is one part of the correct analysis. It'll give you the energy levels. The second thing is the coefficients here on the left. The third one is the adjust all button, then the entropy analysis button, and then the Vegeta test. The Vegeta test I would recommend using as much as you can while your patient is there because you cannot use the Vegeta test when they leave because they have to have the headphones on them. So the way that you do this is you highlight a disease or anything that's in the list, anything in the list, and you click on Vegeta test. It will quickly give you a scan or a scan the patient's organ, and then after that, it will bring you back to this page. What you do then is you click on Analysis Plus, then on the Auto Search button, and you get a weakening or strengthening reaction at the bottom. Notice here it says chronic relapsing pancreatitis, which is what I just scanned. And this seems to be a tissue of the, panc of the pancreas. So when we look here and it says weakening reaction 7%, increasing of nidus of defeat by 44%. What this means is that it's weakening the tissue by 7%, but weakening the organ as a whole or the whole body part by 44 percent. So what this is saying is that the immune system is not strong enough to fight the disease on its own. When we get a um, when we get a, a reaction that is strengthening, it means that the immune system is strong enough to fight the disease on its own. The other very important thing to remember about the Vegeta test, is that it means different things for diseases and everything else. So uh, pay attention here because it's it's going to be a little confusing, but we'll go through it together. So I just did a Vegeta test for a pathomorphology, which is a disease. When I do a Vegeta test for microorganisms, it's not a way of saying how is the microorganism affecting the organ, is it making it stronger or weaker? Yes, it does that. But the get a test is a way to confirm whether the microorganism is there or not. For example, we see that Lamblia comes up here in red. Those are, um, it's a parasite. So if it comes up in red and I want to make sure or double check, is the, is the parasite really there? I will click on the get a test, run a quick scan, and then go to Analysis Plus, Auto Search. And again, I get a weakening compensatory reaction. So what this means, if it's weakening, even by 2%, the microorganism or the parasite is there. If the reaction is strengthening, then it's not there. And by the looks of things, I would probably say that, the, that this uh, parasite is actually what is causing the problem in the first place. There is another parasite here, and I want to make sure that I know, is this parasite there too, or is it not there? So I run a test, analysis plus, and I get the same reaction. So that parasite is there also. As I mentioned in the beginning, I believe that microorganisms cause a lot of um, disease and sickness to enter the body because they just they degenerate organs and tissues. Um, so, what I would say is getting rid of the of the parasite would be the first step that I would take in helping my client. 
Okay, so let me review. This is two ways that I've explained to do Vegeta test. First way is when you do a Vegeta test for pathomorphology, which is a disease, then if it's a strengthening or weakening reaction, it's telling us how the immune system is fighting the disease. With microorganisms, it's more of a way of conf confirmation, of confirming whether the microorganism is there. When you do allergens or foods, the way to do this is whatever it has the lowest coefficient is actually the disease or it's more suitable or it's more probable in the patient. So I click on allergens and all of these metals and chemicals and food, coffee comes up and all these other things come up that my client is allergic to, everything that's in red. So the way that I would confirm this with the Vegeta test is again, I click on the test, I run the test, and then I click on Analysis Plus, out to search, same reaction, confirming to me that this person is indeed allergic to that metal. So if we get a test, pretty much for everything else is a way of confirmation. For diseases, the Vegeta test will, um, will tell us how the immune system is doing. And a little bit different way to do a Vegeta test would be for a homeopathic or any sort of supplement. If you put a supplement in the cup to test it for your client, you will put the supplement or the substance in the cup, click on Vigeto test on, and let's say it's a, it's a Tylenol pill. You click on OK and it'll run a test for the Tylenol pill in the cup. After this, you will click again on Analysis Plus. Make sure that the auto search is doing correctly with the, let's see, Tylenol pill and then the organ and then you get a reaction, strengthening reaction, 14% decrease of disease by 100%. So what this is saying is the substance in the cup is helping this tissue by 14%. So when we do we get a test on a, a substance like a supplement, the way to do this or read this is if it's strengthening 15% or more, you might you have to give a lower dose because it's a strong dose. If it's strengthening by 5%, then that's going to be great for them. Only if it's a naturopathic or herbal medicine. If it's something that is allopathic or not natural, like I just put in Tylenol, 14% is not a very good percentage. It's not very helpful. It's too little. We will expect a lot more from something that's not natural. And when it says 100%, that makes sense because it's a non-natural medication. It will automatically help with the pain or whatever it is, but it's not going to be um, something that I would recommend that my patient takes for a long time. Okay, so some people get confused with the coefficients because when when I was saying that the normal coefficient for an adult is 1.2, they say, well, what do we do with all these other ones? What you would, all you would need to do is just ignore them because they're not relevant. Uh, for disease, if it's a low coefficient, we need to pay attention to it. If it's high, we just ignore it because it's not relevant. With everything else, foods, allergens, um, energy, fears, whatever else that you want to check in this group, if the coefficient is low, it's either good for the person, if it's a medicine or if it's food, or it's um, confirming and saying that this is the problem. So if I look at let's say the aura here and I see these 6.2, 6 point or 0 